Insecure Cafe in four, three, Welcome back to Insecure Cafe. It is your girl, Kia. And though we are ending our season, this will not be the last installment of Insecure Cafe until Insecure is over. So today we are covering episode seven, Low Key Trippin'. And this episode opens up with Molly bothering the heck out of a waitress in the Ethiopian restaurant because she's so indecisive in her life and in her food. And she sees Issa and she tries to pretend like she's on the phone. And when she looks up, Issa has Bed away, like she like, you know, I don't want to talk to you. And Issa runs, not Issa, but Molly runs home to her boyfriend and tells her boyfriend that Issa avoided her like she avoids a job. Now to me, that was petty, passive aggressive, and rude. Keisha, am I right? Absolutely. She is expecting, once again, for Issa to be like running and begging for her, Molly, Molly, take me back type situation. Issa's like, no, nah, I'm good. You know, she's going to have to deal with her own ish. She's got to deal with her own secure insecurity issues her control issues she got some issues she got to work on and jen why does she make the job comment like isa of everybody on the show with molly hasn't she been most consistent with working she was only out of work for a small period of time right she was only out of work for a very small period of time and, and it was kind of Molly's fault because Molly kind of pushed her to change directions when she hated her job for all of that time. But I mean, for me, I was like, okay, wait a minute. Issa not only had a job, but she was holding down Lawrence for the last five years too. So how is now all of a sudden she's been avoiding work? I don't understand saying that and if you're really my friend you would never say something like that i don't care if we are fighting like why would you say something like that yeah it was already so then molly takes her nasty little attitude over to work because she finds that she has a last meeting minute meeting that her assistant forgot to tell her and of course when you're going out of town having a last minute meeting 30 minutes before a flight is never good but she right. basically tells her assistant you are not paid to make me look bad like i understand as a boss you have to be a servant, let them know this is not okay. I had things planned, but I feel like the way she said it was disrespectful. Shled. Did it come off like that, or am I tripping? No, I understand. Uh, I mean, your perspective, and it was really just you know, absolute frustration. I'm sorry, I would have been, I would have been a little upset too because I'm trying to make my significant other happy and also do well at work, and this person is making me look bad. So she could have been a little bit um more a, 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 a softer in her approach but i i do understand the frustration i do because i mean she almost missed her flight yeah, that's true and the good thing is she makes a flight and we get to see the amazing iconic kim field out of nowhere who plays maybell the woman who just got divorced and was like i want to get my groove back like stella and it was just so funny to see her and I was, I was blown away to see Kim Fields. Like, I love Kim Fields. I love her from Regine, Tootie, her as a director. I think, I think it's great. So shout out to Kim Fields. Like, I know you guys were surprised to see her too, right? Yes, that was great. It was great. It was good to see her. Yeah. So and now we're at the trip. She is with Andrew, and we'll talk about the inappropriate stuff after, but she gets to meet Andrew's brother, and they have a close relationship, even though, like, older brother, little brother, they tease each other. Um, so we'll just skip ahead to the point where they're at the pool. Her brother's sister, her, her, the sister-in-law got something splashed in the eye. She's like, I will grab you a towel. There were two white people in front of her. Those two white people get towels and Molly is asked for her room key. And she gets a little aggressive with the lady. The lady looks confused. Molly keeps getting aggressive. The brother-in-law, the brother comes up to help. And it becomes this conversation about race and how we are treated differently than other minorities and how... It, just, it was a really interesting conversation, and I wish they could have developed it more, because from personal experience, Asian people have a hierarchy. It's a very interesting hierarchy. And their hierarchy, some of these levels don't like Black people. Not all of them, but some of them don't like African Americans. And it just felt this weird thing that I felt like the conversation, I don't know, I'm not explaining it correctly, but, you know, Jen, help me out. <laughs> yeah, so I, I get what you're saying. Um, I, I think... You know, the towel situation is another example of Molly sometimes going too far and overreacting because keep in mind, I believe Molly is very narcissist. And for somebody who's a narcissist 
everything is about them and every slight is also about them. Um, it, now, was it a slight? I don't know. Um, may, I mean, I've been to hotels in other countries um, and I've always been asked for a room key to get towels. I, I can't remember the last time I've been to a Ritz or something where they didn't ask me for a hotel key to get a towel. Um, so I think that that was a very um, normal response from the towel person. But I do think that Molly's reaction to it went extreme, but even more so the fact that Molly's just meeting Andrew's brother for the first time. And yes, Andrew's brother had a devil's advocate conversation. But if you remember, he also used the term devil's advocate when he talked to Andrew previously. So that was his normal MO to say, let's play devil's advocate and let's look at this from a different perspective. He wasn't just doing it to Molly. He had just done it to Andrew when they had a conversation previously. So to me, I felt like Andrew's brother was doing what Andrew's brother does to everybody, and Molly just didn't like it because Molly likes things the way Molly likes things. So and she wants, to be, she wants to be right. Yes. Um, and yes. that, I, I, I personally don't think that she overreacted with the towel girl. I think she was justified in that because you, I literally just watched you give two other people a towel without asking them for a key. So why are you asking me for mine? So I don't think that she overreacted there. Now, she took her, she was upset and she was aggravated. And Andrew's brother just agitated her a little bit more. But, you know, he basically was like, it's how you handle the situations. We handle it different. You choose to handle it your way. I choose to handle it mine. And she didn't like that. And, you know, so she flew off the handle. was like, F you and blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't think she had to do all that. You know, it was a calm conversation. She just didn't like the pressure. Well, Shalette, I have a question. She made a comment that I, I just wanted to ask you all about. But Shalette, you know, she said that Asian people choose to be people of color in when it works for them. Do you think that is a fair comment? Um, yeah. Um, I was going to bring up the whole model minority um, uh, m metaphor again. You know, I think that, and, and this, this might be true about immigrants, a lot, a lot of the immigrants at large, is that they come to this country and their parents instill in them to assimilate. So there, they, he, uh, you want to see my key card? Here's my key card. Whatever you want, whatever I need to do to um, comply with whatever you're requesting. So I think that um, it. I think that there's there's a generation of of Asians in all in all cultures that are coming of age right now who are being more hyper aware of. Um, their identity as people of color uh, more so than previous generations were not and andrew's brother may be of that previous generation who just wants to be as whitewashed as possible because they see that as a path to success so absolutely and in his case it, it re i was really annoyed by his question Molly, molly's reaction was above and beyond what it should have been especially with meeting new family members um but again, I'm not surprised because it is Molly and she's too much. And but. even and even better, I feel like to kind of wrap this part of the conversation up, Andrew's brother made a decision for him and his family. Like me and you are cool. We're brothers. I love you to death. Maybe I was wrong. You can go apologize. But I don't want to spend the rest of my vacation going back and forth. I feel like that was the only adult way to handle it. Because even if he would have tried to talk to her, I feel like she was so ready to have that fight like she always is nothing would have gotten accomplished. It just would have been them going back and forth and bickering for no reason. So I know she was disappointed, but that was the best way to handle it. So that's, that's just me. Um, so let's talk about the fun stuff. If your spouse or boyfriend asked you to go on vacation and want to do something, bring something freaky, what would you bring? She brought lingerie. He brought the entire counter from the <laughs> sex store with him in his suitcase. Keisha, I'll start with you. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I mean, he was like, maybe I, I, I misunderstood the assignment, but for me, I'm like, they all go together. At the end of the day, they all go together. I mean, I'm here to entice you with, with, with my lingerie. You brought a few things to play with. I'm cool with it. A few I, things? I, I think that a few, you, you bought a lot. He did bring, he brought three things. That's fine. <laughs> It's just, hey, listen, I'm happy and you happy. Molly, once again, competition and control. She was like, 
You know, I'm like, girl, please go put on your lingerie. You look good, honey. You look good. Okay. Oh, you look you good. really did look good. Like whoever Ooh. Molly's trainer is, they need to put out a workout video because the girl looks amazing. And she looked good in the lingerie. And they had sex on the balcony in front of them. <laughs> oh, that was like, sexy. The sex yeah. on the balcony was very hot and sexy. But it's to me, I thought it was interesting because as Molly being such a dominant creature, I thought that she would be a little more dominant sexually. Um, and that doesn't seem to be the case, um, other than when she told Andrew to, you know, eat her booty. Um, no. <laughs> then I was like, oh. Oh, eat my booty first. Okay. Did I miss that? This is miss that. Oh, he did. she did say that. Oh, she absolutely said that. Oh, how'd you miss that, Shalette? I'm sorry. Oh, I just, you. maybe I just blanked out. Uh, I'm, you did. I'm okay, before we go too far into this part. So <laughs> that was the basic part of the episode. Um, they land at the airport, and Molly has a very awkward exchange with Lawrence. And it flows into the next episode with Lawrence calling somebody on the phone. Raise your hand if you think he called me. He called Issa. Yeah, okay. I mean, duh. But, so here's, the, here's my question, though, with regards to that situation. To me, I felt like Molly was almost semi-flirting with Lawrence the way that Issa normally does. Because you know how Issa and Lawrence have that back and forth, like, movie montage conversation? And then Molly almost tried to do the same thing. And then Lawrence is kind of like, what are you doing? Oh, I get what you're like, saying. I, she tried like, to be the she's cool. Like, she's she's tried, like, oh, from the movie. Like, Yeah, what? she tried to be the cool, funny friend. The cool, like, oh, funny Issa friend. And he was just like, uh... All right, Molly, yeah. you, you okay? And even Andrew was like, what is wrong with you? Yeah, like, right. like, what's going yeah, on? It was, she was forcing it. It was very forced. It right. Was. Well, also because Molly, I mean, she's still convinced that they're, you know, hanging out anyway. Maybe right. that was kind of like her way back in to Issa's life because she's convinced that Lawrence and, and Issa are already hanging out. So maybe he was going to mention something about her, you know? Right. Well, but see, well, she, well, but she's hating on Issa anyway. She don't want him. She does. She doesn't want her to hang out with Nathan. She doesn't want her to hang out with Lauren. It's like mind your business, right? And on that yeah. note, because we could keep going on on, on this for yeah. thirty minutes, I promise you, we can. We will catch up with you guys next week for the next Insecure Cafe. Make sure you watch the episode. We want to see your comments. We want to interact with you in all these places. So please watch the episode, and we will see you next week for Insecure Cafe. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.